Well, my Borneo Ocean adventures are quickly mounting up, and last week's visit to Pulau Selingan was mind-blowing. Where else can you see pretty much the entire life cycle of a sea turtle in just 24 hours? So today I'm heading back to Mantanani with an MRF team member, Jonathan, to find out how technology helps with sea turtle conservation. On this trip, I'm being spoiled and staying at the idyllic and luxurious Sutra at Mantanani Resort. I don't think all research trips are like this. Wow, this is luxurious. I feel like I'm being spoiled. But I'm not here for relaxation. I'm here to find out more about Jonathan's work. He asked me to go find him at the beach. So I gotta go find him. Oh, I see you've got a lot of stuff. You've got your aeroplane out. Boys with yeah. their toys. Right, yeah, like MRF team, they have always teased me about me playing out in Mantanani alone with my drones. Now, it kind of makes sense where we now we need to integrate technology into sea turtle conservation mm -hmm. where we are able to get better data and then more reliable for conservation efforts to be taken place. Well, this does look a lot more expensive than my little brother's toy helicopter. Uh-huh. So, with the drone nowadays, the main three elements that we are looking for is actually the first one, mm -hmm. the battery life. Of course, the better the battery life, the longer the drone can fly up deep in the air. Of course. And then the second one is the software. Mm. Software with a good one, we can actually control how it, we want the drone to perform. Right. And then lastly, the, the camera resolution. Of course, the better the resolution it is, the better we can spot the turtles and to get good quality data. All of that technology in just one small drone. Yeah. Since you can do it all on your own, why don't you fly the drone when you guys are doing the turtle rodeo? Right, so uh, while doing the turtle rodeo, there is a potential where the turtle distribution is being disturbed. So a, this is the reason why I came here alone, when all the turtles are in their natural um, behavior and the distribution are unbiased. Oh, I see. So are you going to show me how to fly? Yeah, let's, let's do it. So you take this. The drone is actually looking at you. Now I'm going to try and fly this drone myself. Hope it all goes well. This isn't as easy as it looks. My eyes are hurting, it's so bright. Where's the drone? Uh, oh my god, what's happening? Why is it beeping like this? I can't see the drone. And it's so bright. Okay, you know what? You take it back. <laughs> okay, leave it to me. I got your back. There it is. Back there! Yay! <laughs> it's safe! Right, now playtime's over. We're gonna do actual work, okay? So, over here you can actually see I'm switching from the original software to a third-party software. It's called Drone Deploy. Okay. 
So this is the software itself. Mm -hmm. And then look over here, you can see all the shaded blue areas mm -hmm. are the places where the drone is going to fly for the aerial survey. Oh, I see. Yeah. And what's more important is the details and the parameters over here. It actually shows you how long it's going to take for the survey, mm -hmm. how, med how many batteries it's going to use up, mm -hmm. and then how many images it's going to take for the entire survey. Ah. So once we are ready, all we need to do is press on this button and the drone will be ready for the survey. Awesome. So now it's ready to go. I'm going to send this off for a 20 minute survey. Okay. Wow. So there you go. Just one button and that's it. <sighs> Finally, my hammock time. <laughs> okay, Alex, nap time's over. Drone is coming in. <sighs> wow. Those 20 minutes just flew by, literally. You know, it's always a relief when the drone come back safe. Mm -hmm. And I do trust the technology itself, just that sometimes things happen. Mm -hmm. So this is all the more reason that I want to introduce you to another big toy of mine. I'm excited to see it. So this is my prototype and I'm actually still working on it to perfect it so that we could actually take this up to conduct a monthly survey. It looks expensive and so much different than the other drones. So unlike the drone earlier, this one actually cost pretty much a quarter of the price over that one. So a lot cheaper. Yeah, so when that drone, uh, something happened to it, it actually crashed and then it sink into the ocean. Mm. But not this one. This one is designed to take off and land from the ocean surface. Wait, wait, wait. As with many prototypes, there is an element of fine-tuning and on-the-run tweaks and adjustments, which are often required before you can try again. But things don't always work out as hoped for. Oh, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Sorry. Right, now I, I've lost connection. Strong winds and a failed tail flap scuppered Jonathan's hope to fly his new toy today. Back to the workshop with this one for now. So I'm gonna go ahead with the drone survey now. Alright, how long is that gonna take? About 4-5 hours. Okay, well I'm going to go and meet Asmin to find out more about his reef check work. I'll catch you later. Catch you later. Hi, Asmin. Hey. I told you I'd come back. Great to see you again. Yeah, so what you got? Oh, yeah, I was walking from the resort and I keep on finding little bits of single-use yeah. plastic. Single-use plastic. Yeah. Um, so basically, this is one of the problems that uh, we've been facing in the islands and Rishik has been addressing this for years now. And that's the reason why we have this Mantanani Plastic Recycling Center. It's for the community to practice recycling on the ground. Mm. So, yeah, if you have time, I can show you around how we do recycling process in this island. I do have time. Let's sure. go. Let me put this off first. Alright, let's go. Hi, I'm Azwin Pata and I'm from Sopona. I've been working for Reshek for five years now, heading the Chintai Mantanani project, uh, looking at three uh, objectives. One is to establish a community-led protected area. Second is to improve the waste management system. And third is working with the local community to improve the livelihood. The uh, program was actually designed through a long-term monitoring uh, of reef check around the islands. 
So what we're gonna do next is uh, we're gonna use this uh, plastic beller machines and to, comp uh, to compress these plastic bottles. Is there a reason why we need to compress the bottles? Uh, well, basically, it, uh, the main point is to reduce the volume, so it's easy for us to transfer it out to recycling company in mainland. Oh, I see. So, yeah, it's more cost and space efficient. So we're going to load all this plastic bottle inside. Uh, once we fill it up, we're going to turn on the machines and press it. Press the red button and then lose it and then press the green one and then now the final one is the white crush it yeah press it again crush it there you go <laughs> so we compress the plastic bottle uh, to reduce the volume and then later we can add more on it and then compress it until it becomes a nice square yeah you can hear the sound yes. And that Six. was four to five yes. big bags of plastic waste. Five kilo. <laughs> Gonna bring it there. So we've dealt with all the bottles over there. What's all this? So these are, are the main culprits uh, to our plastic pollutions in our oceans. Mm. So as you can see here, we got the plus single-use plastic cups. All these are single-use uh, plastics. We got plastic cups, we have these uh, straws, we got uh, plastic containers and then other household products such as, you know, as you can see. And these are the ones that are contributing to thousands of tons of plastics in our oceans. So, yeah. Mm. Here's a depressing fact. Every day, around 8 million pieces of plastic make their way into our oceans. 50% of these are single-use plastics. Plastic packaging is the biggest culprit, with more than 1 million plastic bags ending up in the trash every minute. It is estimated that more than 1 million seabirds and over 100,000 marine animals die from plastic pollution every year and that now 100% of baby sea turtles have plastic in their stomachs. After all that talk of plastic pollution, Asmin invited me out on one of their regular coral reef surveys to check the health of the reef and its inhabitants. Asmin tells me there are over 15 dive and survey sites surrounding Pulau Mantanani and I can't wait to get back into the water. So basically, uh, during the survey, what we are going to do is we have the transect on the reefs already. Mm -hmm. Then we are looking at three things. Uh, one is the substrates. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one is we are looking at the fish. And then the third one will be looking at the invertebrates. Wow. So we are looking at uh, some uh, of um, indicator to this uh, coral reef health. So later when we analyze, we know uh, basically uh, this coral had uh, a healthy or not. Right. Okay, let's go diving. Let's go. I was quite nervous at first, but then my training with Mark kicked in and I remembered what he had taught me. And I quickly relaxed and watched as Asmin laid out the transect line and started his coral, fish and invertebrate surveys. I was amazed at how many different species of corals we saw and how pristine it was, not to mention the dazzling colors and amazing variety of fish. I can see I've got lots to learn about Sabah's marine life. The highlight of the dive for me was seeing the hawksbill turtle swim by, all very chilled. But unfortunately, I also saw some plastic pollution, which I quickly collected. All too soon, our dives come to an end, but what a memorable afternoon it has been. I'm really sorry to leave you guys with the tanks. It was an amazing afternoon though. But I've got to go. i got to check up on Jonathan and the drone surveys. No worries. So, see you guys. See Bye. Bye. 
Hey, Jonathan. Hi, Alex. It took you longer than I expected. Oh, you won't believe the afternoon I had with Reef Check. Really? So I've done my survey, uh -huh. loaded all my data into this folder. I want to check it out. Look at all of this. These are the turtles. Oh, Look. they're so small. Let me try and zoom in to let you see. Oh my god. Oh yeah! <laughs> now, let me run through a few simple steps okay. so you can easily see what we are actually doing. Mm -hmm. So over here, you can see I have loaded some of the turtle into this uh, folder. Mm -hmm. And over here, the boundaries are actually the survey areas that have taken that's gone through by the drone itself. Uh -huh. So, all these dots here represent the locations of the turtles. Wow. So, imagine that months after months that I have collected all this data and eventually are gonna understand and able to grasp the general distribution of the sea turtles. Around this area? Yeah, just by drone technology. That's brilliant. I guess most people just look out over the water and think everything's fine below the waves because, you know, out of sight, out of mind. But with your eyes in the skies, that's gonna change all that. Another incredible and fun-packed day from my Borneo Ocean Diaries. It has been wonderful to return to Pulau Mantanani to see firsthand how Jonathan's drone surveys provide such a clear bird's eye view of the island's turtle populations and how the vital community work by ASMIN and Reef Check Malaysia is addressing plastic pollution on the island, whilst also monitoring the coral reefs and their inhabitants in the surrounding waters. Join me next week when I return to Sandakan to meet KC from MRM as she uses GPS time-lapse photography to monitor shark and ray bycatch in Sabah's fishing industry, here on Borneo Ocean Diaries.